I had very early memories of my mom's boyfriends just kind of coming in and out of our life. Nona Jones lost her father to cancer just before she turned two years old. At age five, her mother's new boyfriend began abusing her. She met a guy who became her living boyfriend, and um, shortly after he moved in, unfortunately, he started to abuse me. And so between the ages of about five and 12, I experienced just tremendous physical, emotional, sexual abuse, all of it. I've been stranded, abandoned, and branded as a broken child. These are the things that are marked my heart. But you. God saw Nona's pain, and he rescued her from the anger and bitterness that could have consumed her life. Today, Nona is, among other things, the head of faith-based partnerships at Facebook. And she's our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. In her role at Facebook, Nona understands the power of technology and information. And that is something Billy Graham also grasped very well, even way back in 1993. You and I have access to more information, facts, and news and knowledge than anybody in history. You'll hear the rest of what Billy Graham had to say about information and data and your spiritual well-being a little later in this podcast. You can also find out more right now by going to findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Have you ever wanted to know the title of one of the songs you've heard here on GPS? Amy did. So she emailed us to find out what it was, and we told her. Amy also said, I love GPS. She used an exclamation mark. We love hearing from you. So email us with your questions, your suggestions, or your prayer requests. The address is gps at billygram.org. That's gps at billygram.org. GPS. God. People. Stories. My name is Nona Jones. I live in Gainesville, Florida. Nona has lived in Florida since she was a toddler. Before she was born, her father was diagnosed with stomach cancer. And so he was given six months to live before I was even born. Um, But he fought very valiantly and uh, he just wanted to be a father so bad. Um, My parents had been married for 15 years before my mom got pregnant with me. And so he was like, there's no way I'm going to leave this earth without holding my child. And so he fought uh, and he lived until just two months shy of my second birthday. And that's when we moved to Jacksonville, Florida. That move was the beginning of a traumatic childhood for Nona. She remembers different boyfriends coming in and out of her mom's life. When Nona was five, one of those boyfriends moved in. Shortly after he moved in, unfortunately, he started to abuse me. And so between the ages of about five and 12, um, I experienced just tremendous physical, emotional, sexual abuse, all of it. Faith was not a part of Nona's home life, and she didn't have anyone to turn to for help. She said she tried telling her mom about the abuse. And her mom did take action at first. But a short time later, the man was back in the house abusing Nona again. And so she grew up struggling with feelings of fear, anger, and worthlessness. When I was 11, I had already tried to commit suicide twice. Like, I really thought that I had no purpose on this earth. Standing in the shadows with your heart against the wall Feeling like you are on the outside, always looking in like if you show them who you are, then you would fall apart. The first suicide attempt happened when Nona was eight or nine years old. My mom had gotten really angry. Her and her boyfriend used to fight all the time. And so she jumped on me and she started strangling me. And um, I was able to get out from under her somehow. And I remember I ran to my closet in my room and I closed the closet door. I locked my bedroom door. I closed the closet door. And my throat was like really like burning and it was like it felt so painful. I was crying and um, I fell asleep just from crying in that closet. And when I woke up, the house was dark and it was quiet. When she realized that no one was home, Nona decided to put an end to her misery. She had seen something on TV about a child who died after accidentally drinking bleach. 
Nona determined she would do the same thing, but on purpose. And so I went to the laundry room because I was going to try to find bleach. And um, but there wasn't any. And so I actually drank laundry detergent and I just assumed that that would do the same thing. Well, ultimately, it didn't kill me. It just ended up um, messing with my stomach really bad. And so I threw up all night long. Um, And my mom, I'll never forget my mom. She heard me throwing up and she was like, you know, that's what you get for eating all that food. Like she had no idea that I had tried to kill myself. About a year later, Nona tried to take her life again, this time by slitting her wrists. The chaos of, of our home was so much that I just felt like I, I had no purpose. It's like even like now you can still see on my wrist like where I tried to cut myself. And that's like a that's a reminder. Uh, it's so close to the artery that it's just nothing but the grace of God that I'm still here. And I, that's, that's a physical reminder of, to every day about how God saved me and rescued me from that dysfunction. It actually wasn't long after that second suicide attempt that Nona had an encounter with God. It started with a simple invitation from a friend. In the sixth grade, a friend of mine invited me to go to church with her, and I had never been to church, didn't know anything about the Lord. But I remember when I walked into the church that day, like I didn't know what to expect, but those people were so nice and loving and welcoming. They didn't know me, but they immediately accepted me, and um, it piqued my curiosity. I was like, what is this place um, where people actually like love you um, without even knowing who you are? And having come from so much dysfunction and just so much anger in my own household, it was a, a great uh, change of atmosphere. And so the, the very first sermon I ever heard that day, the preacher preached about um, God being a father to the fatherless. And of course, that really got my attention because I had wanted my father. And so um, at the age of about 11, I mean, I started to to study the word of God because I wanted to know, well, who is this God? Like, who is this father? Um, and uh, it was around the age of 12 that I accepted Jesus as Lord of my life. Um, and it was literally through all of that trauma and chaos. I believe that God saw me and that he found me and he rescued me. Um, and even though the abuse didn't end um, right at that moment, Uh, I believe that it was really understanding who I was in God and the identity that he created in me that gave me a vision for my future. And so that was out of the trauma. That was the blessing. Nona had discovered that God loved her and the Holy Spirit began to transform her identity. Nona also began to have a sense of worth and purpose. She started focusing at school and making good grades, good enough, in fact, for a full scholarship to the University of Florida. Nona didn't just leave for college. You could say she fled for college, but she couldn't get away from the emotional trauma she carried with her after so many years of abuse. I left home and I left the trauma physically, but the trauma was still inside of me. So when I went to college, I still had a lot of insecurity. Um, I had fears within me. Um, I had feelings of worthlessness, feelings of inadequacy that God really had to help work out of me. So just because I physically left um, the source of my pain didn't mean that the pain was no longer there because it was. At one point, Nona tried to talk to her mom about the awful childhood she had endured. She was devastated when her mother not only refused to admit her sin, but blamed Nona for what happened. That's when Nona began to study what the Bible says about forgiveness, including these words from Jesus in the book of Matthew. In chapter 15, it says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses... Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. I went to college with all this anger inside of me, all this bitterness inside of me. And when I realized that, okay, first of all, the word of God tells us that we have to forgive or else we will not be forgiven. That was my first reckoning, which was, okay, I'm angry at what happened to me. I'm angry at the people that did this to me, but I have to forgive them. And then I had to ask myself, well, what exactly is forgiveness then? What I came to understand is that forgiveness is not letting our offender off the hook. Forgiveness is actually the gift that we give ourselves by no longer being connected to our offender, by actually letting the past be in the past. My past cannot compare to the future I have with you. I am free and I can see there are no more chains to hold me. I'm so dead in the movement hold with the rest of my life. 
Today, Nona has forgiven her mother and the man who abused her. They are not part of her life, but she is free from the bondage of anger and bitterness. And she wants to share that freedom with others. Mm -hmm. And she's doing it in a lot of ways. She's a pastor's wife and mom of two boys. Nona also shares her faith through church ministry, music, and speaking engagements. I'm really using my life as a testimony to God's faithfulness. I talk about things like, you know, never being beyond repair. I think there are people who have experienced trauma and they look at themselves and they feel like they're unworthy or they feel like, you know, they're damaged goods somehow. Um, And so I'm hoping to encourage people uh, through my life, but mostly through the word of God. In addition to everything else Nona does, her day job is with one of the most influential companies in the world. Facebook. She's the head of faith-based partnerships there. Now, that's a role she had never even heard of when she got an unexpected call about the job. And get this, the day Facebook called, the day, Nona had just quit her old job because she sensed the Lord was calling her to something new. I met with my boss uh, at one o'clock that day and I gave her my letter of resignation and she said to me, she was like, well, what are you going to do next? I need to be able to tell people something. And I was like, "Uh, I'll tell you soon. Now, mind you, you I didn't know. I was going to just take some time and think about, you know, my options. But uh, I got in my car around 140. I was driving home and at 205, my cell phone rang and it was an unfamiliar area code which I never answer. And um, the Holy Spirit told me to answer the call. And so I did. And when I answered this woman on the other line, she was like, is this Nona Jones? And I was like, yeah. And she said, hey, I'm calling from Facebook, which to me was like, you know, Facebook doesn't call people. So who is this? It really was Facebook. Someone had given them Nona's name and they were offering her a newly created job, which she ended up accepting. The basic crux of my job is really to help communities of faith uh, leverage Facebook as a platform to build community, which is a very different way than most organizations are using Facebook because most organizations use Facebook just to distribute content. It's it's basically like a broadcast channel, um, but it's social media, not broadcast media, which means that it's intended to drive conversations and relationships. And so I'm really helping, um, you know, pastors and denominations all over the world reimagine what Facebook is capable of. Nona has helped pastors around the world to reach more people and help them grow in their faith. Here's an example. I was working with a church. um, They have like about 10 or 15,000 members, uh, a lot of youth. And the youth pastor mentioned, he was like, you know, I'm just I'm just so discouraged because we used to have a youth Bible study and like 50 kids would show up. But now only like seven or eight are showing up. I said, I said, why don't you create a Facebook group for your youth ministry and have a Bible study in that group? And he was like, well, no, because youth aren't on Facebook. And I was like, trust me, they're there. So he did it and 500 youth tune in. So from seven or eight that might show up at the building, you've got 500 now, right? And so he is totally a believer. um, And that's what I try to encourage people to do. Use social technology to build relationships, not just to distribute content. That's a little glimpse into Nona's career with Facebook. Then there's the ministry work with her husband, as well as all of her speaking engagements. So you've probably noticed by now that Nona has a very full and busy life. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it is not lost on her at all that her life almost ended before she ever got the chance to discover God's plans for her. After all she's been through, Nona says faith in God isn't just a part of her life. Faith is my life. It's why I'm here. You know, it was discovering my purpose in God. It was discovering that I had a father in heaven that was looking out for me, that loved me, that actually gave me a reason to continue to live. Nona's story is ultimately a testament to the power of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. We can forgive because God has forgiven us. But maybe you're struggling to forgive someone who sinned against you. Or maybe you need to be forgiven. Either way, we can help. 
go to this website. It's findpeacewithgod.net. God loves you. He wants to forgive your sins, and he wants to give you the power to forgive others. Again, that website is findpeacewithgod.net. With everything that Nona's experienced, what do you think the biggest lesson is that she's learned? We will learn ourselves in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. You and I have access to more information, facts, and news and knowledge than anybody in history. Billy Graham. And our lives are becoming a frantic frenzy of facts. Computers are fueling it. We have access to more and more information at faster and faster rates. People look at our world with all the crime and all the headlines screaming at us about the killings. And we see the moral depravity on so much of our entertainment. What causes it? Jesus said, the heart. He said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile a person. And that's the reason you need forgiveness. That's the reason you need for God to come along and justify you. Jesus came to give himself to you because he loves you. And when he died on that cross, God laid all of our sins on him. You can leave here born anew and start life all over again with Jesus Christ. Starting life all over again with Jesus Christ. If you would like to know more about that, pay us a visit at findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Our guest on this episode of GPS has been Nona Jones. She leads Facebook's faith-based partnerships. She's also written a book that will come out early next year. It's called Success from the Inside Out, Power to Rise from the Past to a Fulfilling Future. It explores the power of God's love and the biggest lesson that Nona has learned. The power of forgiveness truly is the biggest lesson that I've learned, which is, you know, there are things that will happen to you that are just unexplainably bad. You know, there are things that people will do that just hurt you to your core. And time doesn't heal wounds. It's what you do with the time that heals wounds. And that's why I am such a big proponent of forgiveness. I've had people come to me and they'll say things like, um, I had a, a woman who told me her husband cheated on her and she was like, I don't know what to do. I'm just so angry. And I said, you're going to have to forgive him. And she was like, I can't forgive him. Like, this is just, I'm just so upset. And I said, that's exactly why you have to forgive him. Because if you don't, you will never experience joy again. You will never experience peace again because you're going to go to sleep angry and you're going to wake up angry um, and you have to learn forgiveness. And so the power of forgiveness is truly my story. And that's what I'm hoping people get out of it. Nona Jones has been our guest on this episode of GPS, and we are very grateful for the time she's given us. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Remember, you can find forgiveness from God and the power to forgive someone who hurt you. We can tell you more at findpeacewithgod.net. You can also email us with your prayer requests, your thoughts, your suggestions. Just send the email to gps at billygram.org. GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. No!